Welcome, welcome to this week's episode of the Lone Lobos Podcast. We got a guest. That's right. We teased him in the last episode, but he's in front of the camera this week to welcome us into the month of February. None other than our favorite Korean, Joe <laughs> on the podcast. Let's go. Hey, it's an honor to be here at Lone Lobos with you guys, brothers. I know. For the, for, you've been here, I guess. A few times the podcast has felt to you, but now you're getting to bless the front of the screen. Yeah. So thanks for coming on. They just felt my aura on the outside, but <laughs> they, <aura>. yeah. <laughs> but yo, I'm super excited to be here. Um, love you guys both. So it's, it's fun. It's we fun. love you, bro. Yeah, yeah. For the and for the, the viewers at home who you. don't know who you are, give us give us your little bio. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Well, we can do it for you. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. y'all, if you do not recognize the voice that you're hearing, or do not recognize the face that you're seeing. Josa is an actor. You may know him from Cobra Kai. He's Kyler, <laughs> the bulliest, the, yeah, the bullest bully west of uh, uh, La Cienega. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's also, we're also going to be talking about Spa Night, oh. a, a film of Joe's. Um, but you can catch Joe a plethora of different spaces. He's in LA too. So maybe you'll see him on the street. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. All Let's of us, go. the three of us, the three of us right here. Three LA five. Well, not Jordan. Not Jordan. Jordan's the only one here not from LA. <laughs> but he's repping the hat though. But yeah, let's go. That's let's right. Go. Jordan has to be cool. Yeah, he's cool. He's the hat, though. But thank you for blessing the pod, bro. We love <laughs> you. Um love, love. How's y'all's week? Amazing. Yeah? Yeah. Eating good food, hanging out with you guys. Watching Top Boy. Yeah, watching Top Boy. Um, watching the new Miyazaki Hayao film. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Just hanging out, guys. Do you like fun. being away from home to film or do you? would you rather film? I home? love being away from home. Yeah? Because <laughs> 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 <'cause, laughs> <'cause, laughs> no, no, at home is work, bro. Okay, like, okay, literally, okay. Ma uh, literally manual labor. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, right before I got here, I was painting. Okay. Um. So, over here is is chill. Okay. It's, okay. This is better. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we love that you're here, Joe. Yeah, you, I, you. we're always so inspired. You always have the best food suggestions, movie suggestions. Let's you're just go. a great spirit to be around. Nah, I just love having fun. Just like trying to share uh, stuff that I thought was cool and what thought was good with you guys, man. Because I love you guys. Yeah, we love you, bro. Mm -hmm. And we're so excited that <laughs> you know I always have the hardest time bringing friends friends on the podcast just because there's so much for us to talk about what the heck are we gonna on tangent tell yeah too. what the yeah. heck are we gonna let people in on you know first and foremost i just wanted to get off some some off my chest just because from week to week we've had some stuff happen <laughs> he's like joe <sighs> you gotta do dishes more man <laughs> I know. like you gotta get some shit Boy. off my chest i was like man tell, tell me what man. you think no man. it's nothing like that but joe's i did a, do all that i joe's <laughs> everything I, I joe's a pleasure to be around no i wanted to bring up since last week i had the pleasure of going to sundance sundance film Ooh. festival Ooh. How was Utah. that for you, brother? It was amazing. Yeah. I, I had only been once before um, in between, I think, seasons two and three or three and four of Cobra Kai, um, you know, for Charm City Kings, Ooh. Blue Beetle director's first movie, Angel Malo Soto. So that was really exciting. And this time, you know, I was also going out just as a pair of hands to clap um, and be mm -hmm. a support. I did write down a few of the names because I knew I was going to forget them of stuff to shout out, people to shout out. Um, just because it was fantastic. So first, uh, Jacob, I got to do a panel with, well, I was telling you, Residente, right? Oh, yeah. Rene, uh -huh. rapper Residente from fantastic Boricua group, Calle hey. 13, Ooh. Atrévete Te. Atrévete, right. yeah. So, Atrévete. So <laughs> one of Jacob's favorite songs. It's the best. So we got to do a panel together. Um, it was fantastic. So thank you, UTA, for setting that up. Um, he was in a movie called In the Summers. I didn't get the pleasure to see it, but it was with Leslie Grace um, of In the Heights fame, Sasha Calle, 
you know, of, of, of the Flash fame. So it was awesome to see a bunch of brown people. Um, Amazing. I have to shout out Carlos Lopez Estrada from Didi, um, a, a producer of this film. Love, you know, projects like the Florida Project or stuff that has young kids who are just kids. Mm. I just think it's, there's something so magical about being able to capture what it's like to be a child. Didi I, is that. Didi is that. Um, and then Sick. finally, uh, Pony Boy from director Esteban Arango, featuring the debut of, um, you know, Oscar, you know, maker in the future, River Gallo. Um, and Pony Boy with an I, right? Pony Boy with an I. That's what right. was that one about? That one was the one about an intersex sex worker oh, who's oh, on the run. The Dylan O'Brien one. From Dylan O'Brien after uh, a murder goes wrong mm. during sexy time. Yeah, mm. so it was, without sounding too corny, genuinely some of the most inspiring stuff that you, I get to physically be in the presence of as an actor, hoping to get to do movies or in the front of the camera, behind the camera, there really is is no feeling like getting to see the creatives, the family that worked on this movie say like, this took 10 years of my life and <laughs> I put so much into the story and yada, 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 X, Y, and Z. It just as an actor or as a creative, it makes you so inspired to hope. Like, oh, I hope that I get to be a part of a, someone's life in this regard. Or I, I think story. that's just incredible. Like, yeah. for people to express themselves after ten years of like just writing something, that's I don't know, man. That's respect. It's that's it, it's intense. definitely a a testament to I think uh, you know, especially this year, it was so exciting seeing the not only the divi the diversity. But just the the different tonally types of stories that there were. Usually, I guess these film festivals, the, even the Oscars and stuff like that. I think serious drama, mm. just like it has to be super edgy and deep. And if not, it's not Sundance. But I got to, you know, there were a bunch of different types of films, and that just excites me. Mm. Um, but you know. It's such a pleasure to have someone here in the room who's actually gone to Sundance for something. <laughs> mm. Josa, actually, you know, these movies are usually opportunities for, you know, whether it's, you know, journalists or or buyers or people to get a first hand at, at some of the up and coming filmmakers of, of this generation. Joe, you got to watch it firsthand. Yeah. Can and you, it's, the, it's incredible just hearing the testimony of like some of the people that actually, you know, literally did it, you know, to make that movie to come to the big screen. I think that itself is a process. Like even for the director of Spa Night, Andrew On, he it took him about like almost 10 years, I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, literally. Like he made shorts, you know, he he made all that through Sundance, you know, the writer's lab and everything. And um he took extras of that and put it all together into this story that's somewhat autobiographical almost um but um it's very you know just real to him and he wanted to share this story but it took him a long time to get funding to get the right actors and to get just you know just everything together and i think it's pretty crazy that process and when you're filming something like that do you get a do you get an idea that of of what it is going to be do, when you're going to Sundance do you already know like ah this is this is what it's made out to be do, is it a big deal does it feel like a big deal like when you're filming it how do you go from uh, you know obviously some of these you know films are working on 0 to 30 million dollar budgets yeah. like mm -hmm. what was your experience with your movie and how does it feel you know getting to go to the festival number 1 i didn't know it was a Sundance okay. At all. Yeah, how like, do you? I did not know. Oh, there was no in. like, oh, this is no. this could go to Sunday. I, just... I literally it was like a it was like a blind audition. I, I wanted okay. yeah, I just I self submitted. Okay. Whoa. It wasn't even through an agency, nothing. I just went I just read some breakdown. I I don't know what there was website or something. Saw the breakdown, I was like I was like, all right, I'm gonna try this. And I just submitted. Um they said come in for an audition. So I was like, cool. And then um I saw a few people that I knew there you know waiting in line to, oh, for them to audition oh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but like um i remember going in and it was just like this kind of 
it was like a sketchier little theater okay. in LA. And um, you know, like you know, like you know those theater old theater chairs like that? The red one? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like kind of metal, like yeah. kind of tin, whatever. And then you sit down, and like it's kind of like okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that thing was outside of the in the hallway, like three or four oh, of them yeah. all in a row, and we're like, I was like, am I in the right place? You know, are we actually gonna okay, uh it's cool. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this and I was there and uh, I was ready for, with the script already. I, I got the script. I got the side. And um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this character a lot. It's just like um, something something I've never really seen in American cinema. It was like a full, you know, character. You yeah. know, like he had parents. He had everything for an Asian American male. Mm -hmm. So for me, I thought that was really interesting. And I wanted to give it a go. Um, I went there with... Mm -hmm an idea of a character in mind. Um, I presented it and I guess the rest is history, right? Wow. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, so once I did it and I was in the process of filming this, it, it, um, the I didn't get to see the final cut until Sundance. Okay. So I didn't oh. know what to expect at all. So I wasn't looking at like dailies. Yeah. Mm -mm, no, nah, I, I just did my thing and I, you know, um, the direction given to me by uh, Andrew was really compared to a lot of different directors that I've been with very different very um, he could just he kind of stirs up your emotions and makes you okay. go back to or get into that scene of okay. why he's there you know like um, very specific nuances that he says or you know that we could communicate he was able to lead you down a road yeah 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 emotionally and Character wise, like, cause I was always fooling around. Okay. Say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So they, I'm always fooling around, right? So they're like, okay. And then it actually turned out great um, because of his direction. And um, also, Kijin, who was the DP on that project, uh, I didn't expect it to be so artful. Okay. Like, like um, all the shots that he did would look really like pretty beautiful yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so I, I didn't expect that of course okay <laughs> shout out to Keisha. Okay. um yeah very were you nervous when you when you were finally sitting there how like how Sundance? how far along are you as an actor at at, at, at like when this happens to you have uh, you been has it always been a dream of yours to be an actor in a movie have you already been in movies oh Is yeah yeah your, yeah, yeah. Like, I've are been you a main I've character been, no like no. for the first time like I, how, I've been in plenty of movies in here and there but like it's more like um it, it's very like to get to get into Sundance, I was just like, whoa, okay. And I just go. Like but <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't think like, oh my god. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe I, that's just my character. I don't know. Like yeah. um, yeah, it, it's just like to me, I was like, Sundance, oh cool. You know, all yeah, right, yeah. let's go. And then I'll go and then like it's like something. Oh, the door opens up. And it's like, whoa! This oh, this, is, this place is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all my expectations are like, all right, yeah, let's go. Oh, Jack Nicholson, what's up, man? You know, like you know, it's not yeah. like yeah, but I've seen him like billions, of t like billions of times on the screen. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. but not in real life. So like things like that. Um, it's just crazy. I was just like, whoa, okay, it's happening, happening. And maybe a few days later, it hits me like, yeah, yo, I just met, you know, freaking um, Eastern Promises, like. That, oh, Vigo more. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. met Vigo, dude. Like, what the f what mm -hmm. the hell's going on? Yeah, he's like one of my favorites, uh, bro. Like, uh, he was so cool too. She's just like, yeah, that was great work. <laughs> and yeah, he was just we were just chilling, we were just talking. Uh, and he was like, I was like, sir, like, how did you learn all those languages for Eastern <laughs> Promises? All that. So yeah, just. It just takes a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So nonchalant. But since yeah, since you, you know you love the, it looks like you love the art as well too. I'm sure you know you know how to do it too. I'm like, oh, yes, Mr. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's hella cool. Very um, just down, down to earth. earth. Very down to earth. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what Sunday was like for me. Okay. And then it was just busy, like because yeah. our film was one of um the main. I, I guess in the in competition of course yeah 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 no not of course but yeah <laughs> to me it's crazy and then um, it was just interviews after interview it was like work from yeah. like oh, wow. like four five five in the morning five in the morning like radio show all the way till like seven eight ten at night it was just constant 
press thing, whatever. And it was pretty interesting, that process. I, I, I thought everyone that goes to Sundance does this, but yeah. I think it's only for people that are in competition or stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to you you rage at night. Yeah, so like, we have like, <laughs> Like intervals, and we go to like a party of like just all the Native Americans that you know made some movie, and then we would go. This is dope. Like for me, oh. I think that was dope. You know, just seeing natives like do it, and they get you know, um, yeah, they have their own set of parties, and people could you know they get you get invited or whatever, and you just go to these little parties, and it's like, whoa, I love meeting like creatives from just different cultures, man. Mm -hmm. And how does and how does filming out here fare up when? you know next to film in, in korea you've gotten to film with, yeah you've, you've introduced us to so many fantastic korean filmmakers korean movies you've gotten to work with some of our most outstanding korean korean american actors yeah what are some of the things that you learned over there that helped you out here um over there is very there's no room for um, mistakes. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Like, it's a lot more, like, you know, people shout. People. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because everyone's like, <laughs> okay. everyone's close in a sense. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite, wait, really, sorry, really quickly. One of my favorite stories was Joe was saying, like, one of his pet peeves is people at the grocery line like taking too long he's like come on come on he's like in korea this would never happen or like <laughs> like small talk to your cashier yeah, register yeah. he's like in korea there's no small talk to your cashier yeah. register it's like you're holding up the line get the fuck <laughs> yeah. out of here so, yeah like people asking oh how you doing oh how's emily what the hell <laughs> this would never happen in korea it's like you get your damn produce or whatever and get the hell out and do something more productive <laughs> yeah like but and the same goes for acting you got to be on point you got to be on point okay and they hate it if you're not ready they hate it if you are like fumbling lines or whatever yeah. anything you can't be um an amateur okay you know you can't be an amateur yeah. there's no time for amateurs yeah so, um, yeah, it's very like, you know, boom, boom. They rack out many, like many scenes yeah. per day. Not okay. like two, yeah. three that we have here. It's like maybe seven. Okay. Like double. And you would it's say less takes? Um, You better be ready. So like the directors, they know what they want. They, they prepare like maybe a whole night. They don't sleep really to like wow. prepare for the next day. Mm -hmm. So every... Every like production people that I've met ran into in Korea, um, when they're shooting something, they're not sleeping, bro. Like over here, like you see people sleep, of course, like directors, producers, they all yeah. sleep. Over there, like right after they're done, boom, they're already they're already editing. They're Whoa. Pew, 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 pew. They're <laughs> yeah, Whoa. I've seen that. They're editing, and and also the directors and the um the what's that called? Where they do the screen layout. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. The monitors. Storyboards and, everything? Storyboards and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That that also gets changed or fixed. They're always just… They're working non oh, As soon as they wrap their… Send them yeah, storyboards for the, the next day. day. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, we, we got to take the shot. Da, 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 you know, and it's just… It's a machine. Mm -hmm. I think that's how I could see it. Like, it's just a machine. But over here, it's like… Take your time, Shello. Get into the scene. Yeah. Whenever you're ready… Yeah. What? Yeah. Whenever you're ready? No, not in Korea. It's like you, you you're all ready. Your You've yeah. been ready. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know that by the time you're in Korea looking to get a job, or do you get to your no, first no, job no. And, yes. you're, and then you get yelled yes. at? Yes, I wasn't prepared. I was like, what? Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Psh, I got to memorize all this. What was your first job in Korea? Like my first job. My first job. Oh shoot, I don't remember, bro. You're like a bully or like a? Oh no 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 no. I, I was a. Well, I was like, I think it was an English teacher. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because you because because you grow up in Los Angeles. I was a Hakun, right? I was you're, a Hakun Yeah, you're we were, you're, we were you're Korean American. Teacher. Yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine you have the same reaction that we have when we go to Mexico, where you are Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. we look at you, we see that you're Korean. Yeah, yeah. You look at us, you see that we're Mexican, but yeah. we go out there and they yeah, say Mexican, and then they, and then they say, <laughs> oh, but your Spanish is different. Clearly, yeah, you know, yeah. So, so over are there, you, are you playing Korean Americans in Korea and um, then graduating? I would to have Korean to, Koreans? or I would literally have to, or I would play someone 
the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Really? Yeah, totally. Like one hundred. You know, like okay. <laughs> they're like. <laughs> You blame what's, what's the wrong? silent blame the murderers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a creepy ass killer yeah. or like someone like kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, um, it's just like us like seeing natives in like from Mexico come over here, like you know, first gen or like even one point five gen. Yeah, you could kind of tell like, yeah, they didn't really grow up here fully because yeah. you could tell the accent maybe just small little. Same thing. They yeah. could tell. Like automatically, so um, if if they could tell automatically, like right off the bat, then you're taking you're taking the audience away from the film. They're like, "Oh, uh, he's not native. What yeah. the heck? There's an accent." So that's what they really can't, yeah, use me yeah. in that way. Whereas in like um like okay. I'm not Korean enough over right. there. Over here, I'm not American enough because yeah, you know what? I'm not white. Yeah, you know, like so it's just. I don't know, you know, like we're we're in this like middle ground of somewhere. And- yeah, what is that called? Like, uh, like xenophobia or like xen- well, you know xenophobia I mean? is just fear of the other outside. Yeah, yeah, but there's like a there's a term for that. But I know what you mean. Yes, totally. Yeah, and there is that. So like for me, I'm just like, why can't you guys just put in your brains like the diaspora of like Asian Americans is real or Asians like outside of Korea is real. 100%. Like, yeah, like they should know, like a lot of us immigrated, you know, in the, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever. And they're here. Like they're, you know, there's Asians in Spain, you know, like why, or there's Asians in Mexico yeah. that could speak fluent Spanish. Yeah. What are they doing there? Yeah. Oh, okay. they do a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, honestly, there, there's a lot of Asians in South America doing like textile work, meaning like they make a lot of linen, they oh, make a dang. lot of clothes. In Brazil, there's tons of Koreans. Dude, tons of Koreans, tons of Asians, period, Japanese folks. Even the there was a Japanese president in Peru at one time. Whoa. Yeah. So like it, it's it's really and um You have so much knowledge. No, like I'm just saying, like, because it's about our community, the yeah. like, Asian American community. Like, you know, like so because when we meet up with other Asians in our community, they're like, oh, dude, this guy sp- speaks fluent Spanish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I was born in Argentina. You know, that's all I know. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you know, there's, so there's a group of people that live elsewhere and it's kind of crazy. And I don't know why, but in, even in Korea, they don't really acknowledge that to 100, you know, because it doesn't show in their cinema. Yeah. Anything else. But yeah, maybe in the near future. We'll see. Can you give our viewers just maybe the pillars of Korean cinema? Like, if you got to check oh, out the gosh, three pillars or please, the four oh, pillars, please. Like, um, introduce the squad to. All right, number one, the 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 movie that made me fall in love with Korean cinema was Old Boy. Oh, it's by a director named Park Chan Wook, and just seeing that film. <laughs> don't watch it with your mom or dad don't watch it with your mom and dad yeah don't watch it with i'm not gonna mom. give anything away just yeah. watch it don't watch any remake or anything like that just watch old boy i know it's, a, weird, it's, it's a really weird title too because um yeah but you'll get it after watching the film and i hope you love the way they made this film like uh the art in there is incredible the acting is insane yeah. it's unparalleled um, Unbelievable. There's a and super they could famous testify. fight scene. Absolutely. Like the whole like one. I mean, this is the first time I had really heard of it or seen it. Like everyone tries to recreate or take pieces of or emulate the one or fight scene from Dude. Old Boy. And it's amazing. Yeah. And it's and you and once you watch, you're like, oh, I've seen this movie that tries to do this aspect yes. of that one. Or I've seen this movie that tried to do that aspect of the one. And after watching really that, cool. you feel so grimy. You feel like you were in there, yeah. like sweaty. With the guys, it's just like yeah, he's just crawling in his seat yeah. right now. Yeah, it's that's how incredible it was. It's so immersive, like you know, you just get immersive. into it, immersive. Yeah. And um, it was yeah, that experience itself was what made me like just go into this tunnel of all these crazy Korean cinema. Um, Bong Joon Ho, everyone knows him with Parasite, but you gotta check out his like one of his first few like first features. Um, it's Sarin Chuok, which is uh, a murder. Um, Memories of Murder. Memories of Murder, which is to me one of the great, my greatest, greatest films that I've ever seen. Uh, it's 
and I love his style of just directing. His story is always is just never a happy ending, yeah. which is so true to life to a degree. And um, it's just yeah, I just I just loved it. Um, what and else? Give us a third one. A third one. Um, oh gosh, there's so many. Uh, there's something called um, three iron. Three iron was great. There's something called um, um, summer. Oh, uh, Shinsege, which is called, <laughs> yeah, this is Jacob's, one of Jacob's favorite. <laughs> Shinsege, uh, which is New World, new, or yeah, world, new order, world, world Order, New World Order, New World, or New World Order. And that one, just Hwang the character, yeah, Huang Jin Min does an incredible job. Bungie jumping of their own with Lee Byung Hun. I told this oh. to um, Sholo like maybe a few days ago. Incredible. Um, there's just so much. I just went through this huge tunnel. And even just those like five or six cinemas, if you see that, you could see the ideas and how these things could be shown on film. And um, the acting is just, yeah, I, I think it's, it's something that really touched me. Yeah. Even more than any other um, American cinemas. Uh, or Yeah. You know, Shawshank is definitely my favorite film of all time. Um, yeah, but... These films, like, gosh, it was just incredible. Seeing, How often do you look at a man's shoes? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's incredible to see Asian Americans on screen not playing, a fr or Asians on screen not playing the nerd, the freaking IT guy, the sci freaking sci show, like, that's like, you know, a comedy sci show. Yeah. Like, nothing wrong with it, but not only limited to that. And More to hungry. me, that was eye opening and just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so nice to sit and really get to enjoy these last few months together on this show. Um, it's definitely thoroughly changed my life, as I'm sure it's, you know, changed all of our lives. Um, and it just makes me so much more excited for the next thing that we're all going to work on together. Like, yeah, what the yeah. heck, oh, yeah, what the heck yeah, it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Joe has some ideas. Jacob has some ideas. My brain is as empty as it <laughs> fucking could be. So <laughs> I'm so glad that they're they're holding down the fort yeah. um and be, we gotta do something in la we've been watching so many movies in la that are so oh yeah you just started collateral right just started collateral like yeah. barry set in la yeah Fuck, with michael man jamie fox tom cruise you know it, it, oh that heat remake bro. Just, i wish i was like 10 years old <sighs> man seriously like just shooting in la is such a reward yeah. like there's nothing else like it you know what i mean you can't really cheat LA you know I mean you gotta go to the alleys you gotta go through everything and like like how they film in New York like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it just doesn't look feel right you know what I mean yeah I would love to cause I mean I've filmed in LA before like you know Disney Nickelodeon stuff like in studios I would love to film a movie TV show whatever on location on location in Ooh. LA it would be so cool to do that's one thing that was cool about Spa Night yeah. like I, we went to a lot of places that I've hit up before, you know what I mean? Yeah. In K-Town. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Like, LA, you know, that's, you know, it was amazing. Just seeing the streets, just seeing, oh yeah, I remember, dude, we hit up these streets, all this, this plaza, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, we eat, like, like, I got beat up in that plaza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it's, it's that whole thing. And it just feels like home, like hit, like just being there, I feel like it's a lot, it just, you, you just feel more enveloped into that character and, it really does help instead of cheating on a studio yeah. or something. So yeah, yeah, hopefully everyone, every one of you guys, experienced that, man. One hundred. I yeah. all of us, all of us. I think, yeah, I'm sure the listeners are they're ready. Yeah. They're geeking. I, I honestly don't know how one would try to get started nowadays. Like, Dude, I'm seriously, yeah. I like start start what What's yeah. like on? start try to to get into the acting world. Oh, like luckily we've been at it for so long now that you know whether it's developing connections or knowing you know auditions or being able to have an agent at this point like starting from scratch today in los angeles moving if you know if we were to move to la today to try to make it right. would i wouldn't even know how to i think start. It's, it's the easiest and the hardest has been at the same time like it's it's hard to get started in the way that i feel like people like us did where you know my mom sent just christmas cards to right. agents in la like we didn't Whoa. know anyone in la like you can't you just can't do that now like i remember 
Uh-huh. Your manager's talking about when they would get unsolicited mail at yeah. an agency. They're Whoa. told just throw it away. Yeah. You know, and that's like that's just what it that's just what it is now. And but at the same time, we're in the land of self tapes. Yeah. And if you kind of are just I mean, there's a ton of actors that I'm pretty sure um uh Peyton was watching something, <laughs> some interview about some kids in Sundance, and it was like most of their first movie ever. Yeah. And it's a freaking Sundance movie, you know, like in the realm of self tapes in sending in your audition, you know, now any, literally anyone with a phone and a literally all you need is a phone to record it and you can just send it in somewhere. Yeah. Like you can get on backstage or actors access or whatever the, yeah. the things may be. Um, it's, I think it's different in the sense where you can't just move to LA to get your start now. Like, you kind of have to win the self tape lottery. Almost. Well, the same thing is is I'm finding out in the music industry because as I'm starting to make music and stuff like that, mm. like the way that you are are you have to approach trying to make music is so different. You mm. used to have Good to you used to have to go to a label to yeah, say yeah, like, yeah, yeah, "Yo, yeah. please put me on. I yeah. could do this, this, and this." Now the label's like, "We need the finished product." Like already, we, like yeah, you you better have like your deers and a grunt because we don't need to make risks on anybody else. Like we yeah. we're sure things. So you need your own engineers. Blow up own. on TikTok first, and then come, come. over here and and Damn. like wait, because everyone can make beats now too. Everyone can make beats, yeah. And now that's that's what's driving the radio. Like if you have a a hit that is able to blow up on TikTok or blow, up, that is what you know, that's the pipeline nowadays. Mm, so mm. it definitely is such an influence on the music industry. Yeah. I mean, we know it. We yeah, like yeah, the yeah, three yeah. of well, us. No, yeah. 100%. You will we'll have songs that sneak into the playlist yeah, that yeah. I'll play around Oshun and she's like, Oh, you got that from TikTok?" And I'm like, no, what? she's like, Oh yeah, that's this big on huge... TikTok right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's, it's definitely, I think inspiring for a whole new generation of people who don't have to, who can sit from Spokane, Washington, who can sit from, mm-hmm you know, wherever sure. and make their type of music. And if it touches someone in, in Somali and wherever, like they can, <laughs> you know, they can connect to it. Dude, I want to hear the song that some kid from Spokane <laughs> Washington made. <laughs> and the people in Somali, dude, the people in Somali are shit. definitely head banging to, I still see your shadows in my room. <laughs> like that's, they're the yeah, whole yeah, world. Yeah. And that dude was yeah. just doing it from whatever, you know, so. So I, th- <laughs> it's definitely something that easier said. Even, even, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I think of Juice World, it makes me think of Ezra. Ezra is the biggest Juice World fan in the world. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. He, or at least when, Yeah, when he was in high school, I remember. Wow. Or he's still wow. in high school, but when he was young. And he, he won a gold medal at the Olympics. So yep. he, Whoa. that's some type of motivational music right there. Yeah, it's just I guess this is a different avenue now. It's for everything. Like um like yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's just a different beast, different yeah. Uh credit to all those people the creators that are still doing it and I think but what do you think about the quality though? Like since now everyone with a camera can make something or with a mic can I think make it, something. I think it goes like this. I I think okay. honestly we're in a in a time of not everyone being allowed to. I think maybe seven to three years ago, Mm -hmm. it was like that Mm -hmm. when the streamers were on, well, I mean, they're still on top, but when they were really making their big boom, it was like everyone was allowed to make their project now. Mm -hmm. And I think now that they've overextended, now what we're we're seeing is like the fat is being cut off. That does make me a little afraid, right? Although we do end up seeing, you know, when you're doom scrolling on whatever platform you're on you're just like oh my gosh there's so much new stuff coming out right the unfortunate thing is nowadays those projects those little nuanced projects that you know two percent of people enjoyed in newfoundland canada like or whatever those things those those nuanced projects are going to stop being kind of they're going to stop rooting for them and the only things the only surefire blockbusters with you know people who we already have established are going to be going through no i don't think they're going to do that i don't think the world will turn that way i mean not with not with this round of oscar noms (laughs) (laughs) all right so we got time for a couple more questions we have some questions this is serious Um, bro (laughs) one of the questions we got was if you could be cast as anyone else on the show who would you who would you be of uh, Cobra Kai or, or Kirby Buckets? What are you talking about? Um, this is for for Joe. 
Oh, for Paradise. me. Oh, for uh, Joe's no, side? yeah. Well, let's start with you, Joe. If you could be anyone else, I would love to play Miguel because you know I look like a Miguel. Number one, number two. <laughs> you do look like <laughs> you look like a Miggy. <laughs> like a, yeah. It's cool, What's up, cool. Miggy? What up, baby? Miguel Sanchez is Sanchez. Miguel Sanchez is crazy. But go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> Miguel Sanchez. Is, yeah, isn't that not your last name? What Diaz? No, Diaz. Oh yeah, I was like, that's yeah, horrible, bro. <laughs> <Diaz>. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, no, I knew. Though. I was like, Sanchez. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying. Um, what's that called? Yeah, I think Miguel's story it has a great arc. It has, you know, like he's it's a full story. Uh, he has parents. He, you know, you see the parents on screen. You see the relationship, how he is brought up, and how it's portrayed at school and with the monks peers and. I think to me that's yeah, that's a great story and him like you know just developing into a man and someone who you know like even just him looking um like I think trying to find his father I I think that's that was another layer of like whoa that's cool you know just another layer of like drama um I would love to play something like that lit bro and I think oh, I forgot about that whole arc where you find yeah. your dad and sh- that and was a good scene and you Shol- Billy and, and Sholo just knocked that crap out of the yeah, park yeah that honestly. was super like, good I even remember the day he filmed that and um, after coming back like I was like bro how do you feel bro dude like, do you remember the scene he was just when you're putting Billy to bed and mm-hmm. he says I love you Robbie and you were like yeah dude I remember <laughs> I remember reading <laughs> that <laughs> I remember reading that in the script and I was like, oh, damn, this is like a meaty moment. Yeah. You know? And then I watched it on the day. Or not on the day. I watched it when it came out. Yeah, sure. My mom and dad. And my mom and dad were like. (laughs) And I was like, hell yeah, sure. I don't know. I feel like I I only watched Cobra Kai once. Like, the you know, with the Blue Beetle thing, you got to watch it a couple times before I like it. Of course. Of course. But Cobra Kai, I don't don't really do that. You know the characters well enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I I watch Cobra Kai and I, I more just see it as like, you know my friends doing their acting this job. Is, no, it, you know? yeah, your friends. And Jacob also sees it as like an alternate universe Jacob. <laughs> like He'll watch it once all the way through and then he definitely has a version of Cobra Kai inside of his head where it's just Jacob is Hawk. Yeah, yeah 100%. And, and he's just fucking up everyone. Yeah. I well, feel you like... That, cause Hawk fucks up everybody. Like, Dude, yeah. I think like... I not think, Jacob, but or I know... Hawk solos the whole yeah. verse. No, 100. 100%. I'm telling you, Hawk uh, solos the verse. There's too much plot armor floating around. Uh, and it's I, I need I a plot armor magnet. But Sholo, what about you? Who would you play, bro? Who would I play? Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. I yeah, mean, bro. Billy has to be, I mean, Johnny Lawrence. Billy fan. Johnny is, Lawrence. Yeah, man. I've got to That's be Johnny man Lawrence. That you want. I think, yeah, there's something really earnest about him furthermore i think maybe he's the most honest character in our show whoa i think so i mean he keeps it real what about bert bert <laughs> at little sleaze bowl <laughs> just want to punt him through yeah, a window he's a slimy yeah. little you yeah he's a slimy you just I, I think it has to be billy though just because i mean aside from having the most screen time <laughs> I want <laughs> no. Ralph is like in no I think the most screen time. I think he was the character that subverted expectations the most yeah and he has consistently the most fun stuff to do in my opinion at least I oh. think I've had so much fun through the years acting as his audience acting as the one who gets to react firsthand to whatever the silly thing he says next is mm-hmm. but I think the the flavor that Billy adds because it's him to that character. I would just love to see someone else do that character just mm. to see what the heck they come mm. up with. Mm. Or like how getting to see even, yeah. getting to see him over the years now, I can tell like, oh, okay, this is just like a an extended version of Billy, and these are some things that are you know. But seeing Sholomari the Wenya as as William Zabka, as I mean. But then you would also have to be that character from like the original Karate Kid, right? Well, of course. But then Joe would be Miguel. So it would be totally different. (laughs) Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And Jacob, what about you? Um, Probably Samantha LaRusso. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, God. (laughs) So why? Why? Just tell us why. Kiss everyone. So you can kiss. <laughs> Wait! Oh my God! When we were, <laughs> I mean, say this. Say mean, the one that you said yesterday, Jacob, bro. I mean, you. Could, Jacob you could, had a better. Jacob, 
<laughs> Wait, what was my one yesterday? Jacob yesterday said, I want to be Yasmin so I can kiss <laughs> Gianni. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah, yeah you want to be uh, sit on Johnny's lap. Yeah, on, what the? Yeah, heck? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I want to play Yasmin so I get to make. It I mean, with you, I mean, all the time. I mean, you can still do that. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you could still. No, no, yeah. no. The that's funny. I don't even remember saying that. The character I would want to play the most would probably be Kyler. Kyler would be pretty cool. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think Kyler would be fun. Whoa. Or Silver. Oh, Whoa. Terry Silver. Yeah. Thomas yeah. is such a cool. Um, I feel like his physicality also plays like a adds cool. So much to it, yeah. Yeah, it adds a lot to it just because he's like six twelve. I and know. I know. <laughs> also a karate master. Um, he does such a great job with it, but I just think that would be a fun 100%. challenge. One hundred percent. Yeah, that'd be a really cool challenge. Or Robbie, I think Robbie would be cool. It's definitely. I actually, I do have a question for you, Jacob. Really quickly, mm. how do you? approach a character that is inherently intimidating like i wouldn't say that oh. any of us necessarily our on face value yeah. are intimidating you have to play someone who at, at first glance you know is there do you hype yourself up do you like because you definitely are not the same yeah there's a it's the same voice but it's yeah what do you there's a kid i knew um Growing up, okay, and I don't remember his name because he was only there for my kindergarten year. Okay, and he, at five years old, was just a really intimidating person. Okay, and I just think like, what would he look like? Okay, right now mm. in this situation. All right, we got one last question for you okay. guys. All right, if you could pick one of your favorite emotional scenes. From Cobra Kai, which one would it be? Emotional? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you start. You're number three. In the, you're highest Because you, ha you had a lot. So which one would be like... Oh, like of ours or just... I was thinking just any. Oh, yeah. Your, what's the most emotional scene? Your favorite emotional scene that you've done? Okay. Um, my favorite one... Sensei! I, oh, my bad! I, oh, I really sensei! like, I forget what season is, but there's, oh, it's, it must be the last season. It's either last five or four. There's a scene where after Johnny, he's like, he announced that he's going to be a dad, right? So, he, but he's a kind of making things awkward uh -huh. now. Or no, he announced that he's dating my mom now. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and things are a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. And we have this conversation where we're sitting up in Eagle Fang and I'm like, no, I still want you to like be normal. Like still yeah. want you to be, you can still be like my dad. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that scene. And the scene that you brought up earlier was, is also a great, great scene. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, says, I love you, Robbie. Yeah, yeah. says, I love you, Robbie. That yeah. fucking idiot. And when he says, don't call me sensei, call me your papi. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what scene is that? You don't remember that? Wait, talk, what? Yeah, I remember that. That's season four. Wait, what are you talking about? It's season about? four. What are you, what are you yeah. Stop calling about? me sensei, call me. You don't me remember that? Papa. Yeah. Wait, what? Just call me zaddy. <laughs> That's all he said, what? Right? What are you talking episode about? 12. <laughs> oh, I, I I don't remember this at all. All right, Jacob, what about you? What's yeah, been I mean, What's the, been the most? Oh, does it have to be Cobra Kai? Does it have to be Cobra Kai? Or? No. It, oh, it, if not, I mean, yeah, that's probably still one of my favorites of anything that I've ever done for sure. No, yeah, emotional, just, emotional, emotional, yeah, emotional, yeah. Um, I did a Walmart commercial. Um, no, no I'm kidding. Um, in Cobra Kai. I think when I beat up Brux. I was, yeah, I was thinking that was that emotional. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Joe doesn't think that was very emotional, really. Um, okay, I guess when I fucking cry. No. When I cry in season two, okay, Joe? <laughs> um, <laughs> now, yeah, I'd definitely say uh, uh, season three. That yeah, is when beating I beat up Brux. Beating up mm -hmm. Bo was definitely. Yeah, that was a cool. Jordan just revisited that scene recently. What did you think? Having known Jacob for years now. Oh, yeah. yeah. What did you think seeing him absolutely pummel that poor boy? It was crazy. My first thought was like, okay, those are not legal moves. But my second thought was <laughs> yeah. like, yo, he's really giving it to him. And like, Kyler was just being a little bitch over there watching his, watching his homie get like, hey, whoa. Wrecked. It's a dojo. Dojo. It's a dojo. Yeah. You play karate game. Get I get karate a, prizes. That's yeah. right. 
yeah. I get a I get a text every yeah, once yeah, in a while yeah. from like random like old high school friends, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll just be like, "Hey man, finally got around to watching Cobra Kai." Um, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, like I just watched you beat up that dude. That shit was crazy. Like you're crazy. I was like, wow. <laughs> that was definitely like, I'll take that. I'll take that. To watch getting filmed. Were you in that scene? No, I wasn't in it, but I was. Yeah, I was you were there. there. Yeah, 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 just yeah. Looking. And Joe, what about you? What's what's been your favorite emotional scene that you've gotten to film in Cobra Kai or out? Um, by far is Spa Night. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Spa Night. Like, um, is probably when I was butt naked and. Um, <laughs> That's my favorite too. And uh, dude, I'm butt naked, like, oh, well, anyway. <laughs> I was butt naked and I'm like, I'm scrubbing my, I think my, my side or whatever, my rib area and just bleeding, making it bleed away. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like, um, you know, like how, you know how, um, caterpillars molt into like a butterfly. Mm-hmm. So he kind of wanted that represented mm-hmm. in this and, Along comes with pain, you know? So I just wanted to express that. And just, I think that was by far one of the toughest things I had to do. Just emotionally. Yeah. Like, honestly, that film, that film, bro, like every day, oh, not every, not every day, but a lot of times, like I had to release myself um, just emotionally and just mentally by, you know, just talking with real, like, just random people. Oh, yeah. So after I filmed, on my way home back to, like, Pasadena or something, like, um, I would, that, at that time, I was living in Pasadena, and um, I would just, like, drive next to this, uh, every, the freeway exit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, off the 210, and it was, there's always these Where all home- those lights are? Do, 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 do. No. Oh, kind of close, but... Okay. Uh, it's after that, and then there's these um, tents with homeless folks. Oh, okay. I would just go there and just share bread and just talk with them. I Whoa. just wanted to talk. Yeah, and then just to uh, decompress. All yeah, that. yeah. Just it was kind of cool. Just, just, just needed to come decompress and freaking talk with real folk and see, seeing them made me like okay, you know, just talking with them just made me okay. I'm good. Well, that's yeah. amazing. Dude, it, I had to, bro. Like, it was just way too, do- way too hard. Um, it's not the fact that you know I was butt naked. It wasn't mm-hmm. the fact that I was playing um, a LGBTQ role. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was just. You're taxing. saying it was that same type of parental pressure that you yes. felt back in the day. Yes, mm. I, I, I wanted to put myself in there because that's how it is with a lot of Asian American kids, especially. And is that something that you would like to? try to emulate or you're thinking ah you know I don't necessarily know if I need to do a story that fits this criteria like I can do something outside of this or or is or oh is- you mean while I was filming that or for the next projects or whatever do I need to go outside of that what yeah are, like, you like is that type of feeling that you're talking about like going back into that headspace or thinking you know or or, or dissecting this type of story is that something that you're that you would like to do again or you feel like oh, yes okay. i think yes any um any type of drama well well first of all any type of drama that deals with family and all that stuff i would love to be a part of bro. Yeah. like because i think that's real everyone has parents <laughs> you know whether they left them yeah. early or yeah. whether they never had them even when they don't have them they have like a parental somebody you know what i mean 100 yeah so it's just something that you, I would love to connect with, especially in film, because I feel a lot of things happen because of people's upbringings. Like, yeah. you know, whether it be freaking John Gotti, whether it be freaking um, Gandhi, like their parental upbringings have probably molded them in a way they're the way, way they are. Like Batman, I don't know. Yeah. You know, Blue Beetle even. Is there is there a real person that you would like to play? A real person? Yeah. Mm. Um... Yeah, yeah. I would love to play a guy named um, Young Oak Kim. Okay. Um, I would love to play him in a film. And he was one of the, remember I told you about the um, Not the, the highest, um, I think highest decorated soldiers of America. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you he was the guy that was in charge of the oh, Japanese okay. Japanese army battalion. Yeah, Joe was saying this. 
why are there not more <laughs> Asians in war movies? Yeah, and we need to have we need to have and not, not and not even to to you know, but we need to have these types of movies to show people that in a ironic way, like you can be American too. Yeah. Film does such a great job, I think, at showing people things that for some reason they can't get through their fucking skulls. Mm -hmm. And by having, you know, this movie about a real person mm -hmm. who was one of the most, if not the most decorated soldier in the... Yeah, like US the battalion. This is the most decorated battalion ever in U.S. history. And it was a soldiers full of Asian Americans. So they took, was Korean too. they took Japanese people from the internment camps and um, Japanese people like JAs, Japanese Americans, and other Asian Americans that were in there. They were like, you know, we're prove, we'll prove that we're loyal to yeah. the US. Dang. We're American too. So they formed a battalion and they went there and kicked ass. So sick. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it, dude. It's so scary. <laughs> Would you, all of us eventually will have our war movie. And I just hear that there's no way to go about doing those movies except for. Oh, just jumping in. Just jumping yeah. into yeah. the trenches. Yeah. I'm excited. To I would love it. to go through boot camp, whatever they put people through. We better start stretching a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun. That's It'll be right. fun. Joe, you were here last week and you heard you were here now this week. Every week we end our episode by putting a song onto mm. our playlist and you've blessing the podcast this week. So can you bring to us your very own Joe Sa song of the week? What song do you want to put on our podcast to? Rams Oh, oh. <laughs> what is it? wait, what is it called? The, the bat wheels one, right? No, bad, bad to the Chrome, bad, bad to, to the Chrome, chrome. bad to the That's Chrome, hilarious. bad to the Chrome by Jacob Bear trying to show him. Let's go. Maybe it could have possibly that. been my song of the week, and we might have talked about it, and I might have just got that stolen from me. But it's all good. Hey. Wait, really? <laughs> you snooze, you lose. Yeah, snooze, yes, you man. lose. All right. Well, yeah, you yeah. have time to think because we have Jacob's song of wait, the wait, week. No, what's this song? Um. Uh. Love sick. Love sick. That's a Joy Bada song. No, it's ASAP Rocky. Rocky. Oh, yeah, I was just looking for it. Hmm. The Weather Co. The yeah, weather yeah, yeah, song. yeah. Yeah, oh. Love Sick. Yeah, we're watching Top Boy. Mm -hmm. That's in Top Boy. So I'm gonna do ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky. Love Sick. All right. Well, then I guess you like that man, damn. I it's, gotta play that for my things yet. To All add them it on out there, to the, ASAP Rocky. The list of songs of the week, I guess I'll fall into line. A top add, boy, top boy pick. Well, it's about to be a a London pick. Ooh, London I'm pick. I'm going with Stormzy. Stormzy. Ooh, Rainfall. Rainfall in it. Rainfall. Yeah, you know who's featured on Rainfall? Who's featured? No. Um, Kano. No. Uh, Central uh, C. No. Mary, Mother Mary, or Mary and what's that group? Mary and Mary. How can I be home a fool? Oh, my knees so I can dance. it is Mary, 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 Mary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It does keep so for all of you religious folk out there, find Jesus. Yeah, and listen Jesus to that is song. the light in it. Is Kirk Franklin in it too? Yeah. Oh wow. no, that was a different one. No, no, oh, that's that was a that chance. Was, that was a chance. chance. Ooh, Rainfall. That shit was Rainfall by Stormzy. Hey. All right, and our keep that shit in it. And for our team, furthermore, Tatsana. Monica, Jordan, Famo, Jordan. Famo. In the spirit of keeping it in the UK, I'm going to go with <laughs> a, a throwback. Craig David, Seven Days. You want some old, old shit, blood? Craig whoa. David. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, seven I'm, days. I'm whoa, whoa, fam. Okay. I He's taking that. it back, fam. That's like. Craig David. <laughs> that's, that's 90s. Nice. Craig David, fam. It's, it's 2000s. 2000s, so man. Them. How does it go, Jordan? Goes, uh, he just goes through the like Monday. He made me a break on a Tuesday. Uh, yeah. Let's go. He be making love by Wednesday, Wednesday. and on and Thursday. Thursday I, I eat fried steak and steak and chips. Fish and chips. We chicken shop on Monday, Whoa. and then we go to Harry's Bakery on Tuesday, something like that. That's right. Uh, and Monica, please Monica. Send, send us off. Some Harry Styles or something? What you got? No, I'm going with uh, No Doubt. Just a yeah. girl. Oh, No just Doubt. A girl. Just a girl. Love it. Love oh, it. Just a girl. Love it, love it, love it. 
just a girl in the world living in <laughs> captivity. Yes, and if and we didn't so mention already, job. between this week and next week, watch the Oscars because we're going to be talking Oscars. So if, yeah. if, if try, you don't want to watch get all the films for you, sit through Maestro. We're doing it too, okay? So, Joe. Yes. Thank you so much for blessing our podcast. Hey, hey, thank you for having thank me. Thank you for, for coming real. on. Can thank you, you please Anytime. let the people know if they would like to find you, if they would like to learn more about you, where they can? Find me on the streets, farm. All <laughs> <laughs> back at Anfield Road. That's where I belong. <laughs> and that's why, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm feel the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, just find me on IG. Find me with these guys hanging out in Atlanta right now. Um, yeah, I'm just chilling, brothers. Um, love y'all. All right. Thank you so much for having me. For real, this is fun. Um, it's always a pleasure. And it's an honor. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Joe is one third of our podcast. I'm your second third, Sholo Mariduena, joined by my third. You know what it is, man. Damn. Wog one. Jacob Scott Thomas Burton. That's right. And if you enjoyed this episode, Mo. feel free to subscribe, drop a like, do your thing. Woo-hoo. We'll see you in the next week. Top Thanks. boy in it. This episode of Lone Lobos is a Lone Lobos production produced by Monica Tamayo and JMKM with intro music by Nicholas Gray. Like what you hear? Check us out on Instagram at Lone Lobos.